Hello and welcome to the latest instalment of GBN America with me, Patrick Christie's. And today we are joined by Dr. Daniel Boba, who is a board certified uh, general psychiatrist, child and adolescent psychiatry, as well as his fortes and forensic psychiatry. And he's certified by the American Board of Psychiatry and Neurology, amongst other things. Also, with a big focus on addiction, which is vitally important given the latest craze that we're going to be talking about today. Now, it involves a new trend called Sephora Kits. And this is Generation Alpha Girls, which apparently makes them around uh, 10 years old, some of them younger, getting involved in an obsession with skincare products, forcing their parents to buy them for them, all because of what they're seeing online. Skincare products that are, of course, meant for much much older people. Dr. Daniel joins me now. Thank you very much. Great to have you on the show. Can you explain what's going on here with this latest craze? Well, I think it should be noted that there is no correct age to start wearing makeup for kids. A lot of it, it depends on culture, socioeconomic status, and peer group. So we should put that right out front, that there's no age where kids should necessarily start doing it or not doing it. It really is very uh, individually dependent. But I think what's going on here is this is the latest trend to go viral. These social media companies use algorithms, which are highly reinforcing. And I think there is somewhat of an addictive quality to it. It does stimulate dopamine in your brain, which is part of the reward system. And so I think these trends pick up very quickly uh, in overnight, basically. But why is this so concerning? I mean, a lot of people might just be looking at this now and saying, well, what's wrong with a bit of moisturizer? Well, some of these products could be a little bit harsh uh, for young children. Uh, There may not necessarily be any harm in it. A lot of kids model their parents' behavior or they see other kids doing it. So that in and of itself uh, is not harmful. I think it's really um, sort of, it's not the problem. It's the symptom of the problem, which is the effect that social media has on kids. And I think that the beauty industry monetizes the insecurity of these young kids in a way uh, that could be very damaging later on, whether it contributes to depression, to eating disorders, or other types of mental illness. And I don't mean to suggest that it's causing mental illness, but it could sort of be the fuel on the fire. On the fire. And if if they start very young then, how damaging can an obsession with ageing be? Because no matter what you do, ageing is a part of life. And so they are going to find grey hairs one day. They're going to find a wrinkle one day. I mean, how damaging or dangerous could this be for kids as young as 10? Well, I think Western culture is very looks focused. And I think this is why uh, people are tremendously insecure, especially young girls, especially young women who fall victim to this. And so I think it is one more thing that we need to you know, consider uh, in terms of the development of these young people and their focus on looks and beauty and the objectification that it goes along with that. Are parents fueling their children's obsession? So I think parents have to be uh, on top of their kids like they never were before. I think they really have to be on top of the social media. It's very difficult. I used to say to parents, you know, keep the computer in a room in a common area where you can see what they're doing. But now they go to school, they have smartphones. I think the best line or the best... Um, tact to take if you're a parent is to keep an open line of communication without judgment, without shame, and allow your kids to come to you with anything and check in with them and make sure that you're on top of what they're doing. I think that's the key. I mean, some of the products that I'm reading about here, you know, Stanley Tumblr, which is $45 for one of these. Where are the kids getting the money from, for goodness sake? I find it absolutely ridiculous. I mean, how are kids expected to keep up with these expensive trends? But also, you know, when they go into these stores and they're asking for these things and they're 10 years old, I'm not one for increasing legislation and regulation, but it does make me wonder whether or not children as young as 10 should be allowed to buy some of this stuff. Oh, well, again, you know, we don't want to overregulate, but, uh, you know, Sephora and all these stores are probably laughing to the bank. Uh, because they have a whole new crop of customers to buy their products. But the parents are really the last line of defense. And if the parents are giving them the money to purchase these products, then shame on them. There has to be limits. And that's part of the problem I see as a child psychiatrist. Parents aren't setting limits. They don't want to give their kids no for an answer because they don't accept it. 
There's all these outlets for instant gratification and reinforcement. And so it's really the parents that have to be the ones to put the brakes on it. We have influencers now with these makeup tutorials or skincare routines or dental care routines that are, I think, shamelessly targeting children for clicks online, aren't they? I completely agree with you. And as I said in the beginning of our conversation, I think these social media companies know that. They put these short videos on there, which are highly reinforcing. Uh, the videos are getting shorter and so are our attention spans. And they know that. They know that children have brains that haven't completely developed yet, that they don't weigh the future consequences of their actions, that they are constantly seeking out novel experiences. So it really is designed for that brain that needs that constant reinforcement. Just talk to me a little bit about that then, the actual child's brain and the, the proper psychology to do with this, you know, and, and I think that should open a lot of parents' eyes. If you think that you're giving in to your child so that you get an easy life or you're doing the right thing for them or that you're spoiling them, the actual psychological impact of reinforcing this kind of behaviour to a child whose brain is not developed. What is the child's brain like in that regard? How can that affect them? So if you think of the brain as the gas and the brakes, in a child's brain, the gas develops first and the brakes develop later, where they are much more emotionally driven and not driven by logic so much. And the reason is, is because the brain develops from the back to the front. The last part of the brain to develop is called the prefrontal cortex. That is involved in impulse control, executive functioning. And so in a child's brain, you have a brain that doesn't weigh the future consequences of its actions, that's constantly seeking out stimulation and new experiences. So they are particularly prone not only to drug and alcohol use at an early age, but also this social media that, again, is highly reinforcing, highly rewarding and they go back and click and click over and over again and mimic or emulate a lot of the things that they're seeing because of their brain and the way it's laid out. Yeah, watch out there. Look, thank you very, very much, Dr. Daniel Boba there, for your expert insight into what I think is going to be My a pleasure. problem and a ticking time bomb for society down the line. Take care. Chat to you soon. Thanks so much. Take care now.